Hello and welcome to another episode of Nerd Paints. If you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe below and post any comments if there are any models that you'd like to see painted. So I have to say I'm pretty excited for this one. When I first got this, I thought it'd be really cool to pull him off of his base, maybe add some rocks underneath him like he's running along a cliff of lava and throw in a few skulls, you know, something just to, just to build it up. So that's kind of the direction I want to go with this. Now with that said, it's completely up to you if you want to take them off the base or if you want to cut them off the base or just leave them as is and then build onto the base itself versus taking them off and adding onto it. But I'm going to go ahead and hit pause and attempt to cut him off of his base. All right, as you can see, I was able to get him off of his base, luckily without ruining the model or any self injuries. So for my next step, I'm going to take slate chippings by Decor Plus. I pulled out a few different slates that I thought would look pretty cool. I'm just going to kind of move these around, get the look that I want before I start gluing it down. And what I want to do, I'm going to actually want him on top here. And so I just kind of stacked the rocks around that I want to use that I thought looked pretty cool. I'm going to put in some green stuff underneath his foot here and just to help cement him in. But first, once I have the look that I want, I'm going to get some super glue and just start gluing these rocks to the base of where I want them. You want the glue to completely dry. I'm just doing one rock at a time. And just push it down where I want it. And I put a little bit of glue on top here because I'm gonna put another rock on top. Just building this up to where I want the lava to flow in between here as well on the base. So I'm going to keep this middle part open where I want the lava to come through. After that, I'm going to take a drill. I'm using a drill bit, which is about the same diameter as the paper clip that I'm going to be putting through his foot to help mount him to the base. You want to be really careful when you drill through this. Um, don't shoot it up through his ankle. If you notice here, the paper clip just barely goes in there. It doesn't go in there too far. In fact, here's about how far it goes in. So you want to be really careful. I'm going to take some green stuff and mix the two together until you get a shade of green. And once you do, this will harden in place after a little while. Just kind of roll it through here, get it really thin, which is I'm going to put this in his foot. Once I get that in there, I'm going to take my paper clip. I also put a little bit of residue of green stuff around the end of the paper clip. I don't know if this part's necessary, but I did it just, just to help strengthen it. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and just shove it through here. I'm going to put some super glue on the tip and then shove it through into that hole. Might just add a little bit more green stuff around the base here just to help give it a little more strength. And then next, I think I'm actually gonna put a little slate going across here to act almost like a bridge for the lava to go underneath. I'm just gonna get an idea of where I want this. And then I measured the paper clip and I cut it off to where it doesn't extend beyond the base. So he'll stand on top of the stone here. I'm just kind of measuring it up to where I want it. Once I know where I want it, then I'm gonna take some green stuff and I kind of got a pretty good amount and then right now the super glue is pretty dry, so it's not going to pull off the base. I'm just going to work this in here to, of where I'm going to want the fire giant to mount. I'm just going to push this down, maybe get the tip here wet so it will, so I can work this in a little bit better without it sticking to the plastic here, to my plastic tool. I'm just going to work that in, then once I get it where I want it, then I'm just kind of measuring, making sure that there's, that it's thick enough for the fire giant. I might need a little bit more just because that paper clip does go a little bit further. So I'm going to raise it up just a little bit higher. Then I add a little bit of super glue underneath this stone, and then I'm going to go and press this down firmly onto the green stuff. I'm going to go ahead and push this down, and then I'm going to work the green stuff in here again. Just make it nice and smooth across the stone. 
then I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a lot of this excess green stuff out. I'm just grabbing some stuff that's close by. I'm gonna use a nail here to help get some of this green stuff out. Okay, and after that, I'm gonna add some glue underneath his foot, and then I'm just gonna shove him down into the green stuff. Make sure that he's, that he's in there pretty good and tight. Might use the head of the nail, just press the green stuff into the ball of his foot underneath. Work this in there just to help give it a little more strength and also to, to help smooth this out. Also just to add a little bit of roughness to the green stuff so it feels like it's a rock or it looks like it's part of the rock. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and let the super glue and the green stuff completely dry before I move on to the next step. I usually wait a good maybe 24 hours for the green stuff to completely dry. So at this stage, go ahead and hit pause and then let the green stuff dry and then we will continue. Next, I'm gonna take some Imperial Primer and I'm only gonna go over the base where the lava is gonna go. I just wanna make sure that, I just wanna make sure that the water texture sticks to the base. And then I'm gonna let that dry and then I might add another coat or two of the primer. Okay, I'm also gonna take the Imperial Primer and go over all of the rocks as well. I only needed to put maybe one layer onto the rocks. It actually sticks to this pretty well. The base, it took a couple coats to completely cover the base. Once that's completely dry, I'm gonna take astrogranite debris. The rock here is completely flat on the side. I wanna just kind of build this up a little bit. But again, I don't wanna cover this opening completely. I wanna make sure that there's enough room for the lava to come through. So I'm gonna take just kind of a crappy brush, one that I don't usually paint with. I'm just kind of work this out while adding some texture on the side of this rock. And I'll just kind of clear that out, smooth it out. And then on here, I'm gonna add some skulls. So I'm gonna add a little bit of debris over here. Wherever I'm gonna add a skull, I'm gonna add some debris in here and that'll help cement the skull in there. Might wanna use some tweezers to help if you need to. This, I'm just again grabbing something that's nearby. I add a little bit over here as well and just put a skull in there. I'm add another skull in here. So again, put some of the astrogranite debris down and then add some skulls. Just adding some debris and then working in a, a skull here and there. I found that usually use odd numbers. So if I'm gonna add skulls, I might add three or in this case I might do five skulls total. I don't know what it is. For me personally, I think an odd number usually looks a little bit better visually than an even number, but again, that's just me. And I'm gonna use the tip of a brush, just kind of work some of the extra debris out. Okay, and then once that's done, I'm gonna let the astrogram debris completely dry before I move on to the next step. Again, give it some time before you move on. Once it's completely dry, I'm gonna take Vallejo water texture, and I'm gonna add this. This is gonna be the base for the lava. So again, I'm using a brush that I don't normally paint with, just kind of a, this is kind of a cheap brush that I bought. I'm gonna use that to just kind of work in the water texture and smooth it out. I don't want it to fill up completely, so I'm gonna pull some out from the top here. Just make sure that there's enough room between the water texture and the stone just above it. The water texture will shrink when it dries, just a heads up, but I just wanna make sure that again, it's not filled up completely. And then once that's completely dry, again, maybe another 24 hours, this prep time, just a heads up, if you haven't already guessed, take some time in between each stage. But if you're doing this, then in the end, I think it'll be worth it. All right, this is after it's been completely dried. I'm gonna take some painter's tape I'm gonna use two different primers. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover his, his sword pretty loosely. I don't, I'm, not gonna, I'm not worried about wrapping it pretty tight with the tape. I want it to be able to come off pretty easily. And then I'm gonna go ahead and prime it with a black primer. And then once the black primer is completely dry, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tape off the sword. And then I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm actually gonna use a garbage bag with some painter's tape so that way I don't have to cover the whole model with tape and risk pulling off some of the primer from, with the tape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and prime the sword with a white primer. And now after it's been primed and dry, then I'll go ahead and remove the, the tape. 
So here's, as you can see, I'm using a black primer for his body because I'm gonna use some darker shades. And then for the sword, I used a white primer because I'm gonna use some brighter shades for the fire. Now, once that's done, we are ready to move on and we're gonna go ahead and start working on the base paints. So first I'm gonna take some Ulthian Gray and I'm gonna take a dry brush. This is gonna help build up some of the highlights. So I wanna get a lot of the excess paint off of my brush and then I'm gonna go over wherever there's gonna be light hitting the model. Nice thing about using a cup here and mounting the, the model onto a cup using some ticky tack, wall tack. By doing this, it keeps my hand away from the model. I'm able to paint a little bit easier. And not only that, but I can use the edges here, the little ridges on the cup to get a lot of the excess paint off. But I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush over wherever the light is gonna hit most. So I'm going over the top of his arms. I'll go over his forearm here because there's going to be a lot of light reflecting off of his sword onto the top of his arm. And then I'm also going to do a little bit on top of his hair. Again, on this side of the body, particularly where the fire is going to reflect off of his body. Maybe a little bit on the top of his head just for natural light. Just working my way around, mainly staying away from the shadowed areas, underneath his legs, um, underneath his arms. Really just where I want it to be a little bit brighter. So even though you might have gotten a little bit of primer on his hand, then that's actually okay. You can blend that in using some of the dry brushing here. So as you can see, I went over parts of his body where I want the light to hit. I got some on the rocks, I'm gonna actually gonna I'll paint over that black later, so don't worry about it if you got some dry brushing on the rocks. But this gives us a nice base to work off of. So next I'm gonna take some Skaven Blight Dinge by Citadel, but also the Fang. I want kind of a purplish gray. So I'm gonna add both of these to a wet palette. It's about a three to one ratio, the gray being three, the Fang being one. I'm gonna mix those two together. And then if you need to add some water just to thin that out. And then I'm going to start going over all of his skin. As you can see, it's fairly thin, so the darker areas will stay dark. And also these lighter areas where we just dry brushed will remain a little bit brighter. I'm going to go ahead and paint over with a thin layer of this throughout all of his skin. Underneath his legs, his feet, his arms. This is where you can see the dry brushing really helped maintain a lot of the brighter areas. Okay, and then next I'm gonna paint his tongue with the fang. So I have some of that on my wet palette. If you've mixed all of your paint, then go ahead and add a little bit more of the fang, but I'm gonna use the fang to paint his tongue and also the inside of his mouth. That's gonna be more of a purplish color. All right, next I'm gonna take Gehenna's Gold. I apologize if I'm pronouncing these wrong, and also Retributor Armor. And I'm gonna mix these, it's basically a I've already added these to my wet palette, sorry about that, but it's, it's an equal ratio between the two. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint all of the gold with this. Gehenna's gold gives it a little bit of a red tint to the gold, which I like. But it's about a 50-50 ratio, and I'm going to go over this with a few layers, keeping it thin so it doesn't build up or clunk up in some of the recesses. If we go over all of the gold, which You'll go over the chain going around his waist, the hilt on his sword. Um, as you can see, the, the gauntlet going around his arm, his hand, his headpiece. All of the gold we're going to paint with this. Including the rings on his hair. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and take some dried bark and add this to my wet palette. You can add a little bit of water if you need to, and I'm gonna paint the cloth underneath them with the dried bark. And this comes around through the backside as well. And then I'll take some Bane Blade Brown and add this to my wet palette as well. About a two to one ratio, but I'm gonna mix the, the two browns together. Just want to lighten that up a little bit to give it a different shade for his hair. And then I'll go ahead and go over all of his hair with this. Okay, 
And then next I'll take Ushapti Bone and add this to my wet palette. I'm gonna use this to paint all the skulls. I'm not painting the skulls on the base though if you added any, just the skulls that are going around his neck. Nice thing about a wet palette is it helps automatically thin some of the paints, but if you need to add a little bit of water, you just don't want it to, to fill up in all the different crevices and recesses. I'll use this also to paint the horns on his chin as well as his teeth. Next I'll take the Skaven Blight Dinge, that's a tongue twister, and also the Fang. If you need to, I'm just going to add a little bit more to my wet palette. Again, the same thing that we did before, about a 3 to 1 ratio, mix those together. And I'm going to start building up some of his skin. I'll add Ulthian Gray. Put this right next to it, and then I'm going to create a shade between these two. I'm adding a little bit more Ulthian Gray just so I have some pure Ulthian Gray off to the side when I need it for some highlights. But I'm gonna mix the, create a mix between the original shade and some of the Ulthian Gray. Just working this up to give me a, a little bit of a brighter shade than what we originally had. I'm gonna add some Abaddon Black as well to create a really dark shade for the, for the shadows and the darker parts of his skin. So as you can see, I have a few different shades now. I've got a, a really dark shade. I'm gonna add some water to thin that out. And I'm just testing it to make sure that it's pretty thin. You'll, you'll want it to kind of beat up on your wet palette. And that's when you know it's, it's fairly thin. So I have a darker shade, kind of the original shade that we had, semi-bright, and also the straight Ulthian Gray. And I'm actually just going to go around and build up some of the highlights on his skin, jumping between these different shades. This is the part that actually might take the longest, just working different areas. Taking some of the darker, adding that in here while it's still wet, I might take some of the medium shade, add a little bit of that, and then just wet blend the two. Now when you wet blend, you want to clean your brush off completely or have a second brush handy, and then just blend between the two shades. You'll have the darker shade, and then if you add a lighter shade, then take your brush and then blend the two together. So I'm going to do that here on his stomach. I'm adding a little bit of a brighter shade and I had that darker shade and I'm just blending them together. So I'll stay on this shot just a little bit longer to demonstrate. I'm really working between three different shades, the darkest, the regular skin color that we created, and then a slightly brighter shade. And cleaning my brush in between, just quickly wiping it off on a paper towel. But right here I grabbed a middle or mid shade and then I'm gonna jump to a darker shade right down here. All of it is still wet and I'm using thin layers and I'm just feathering it through so it'll blend naturally. So I'm just working between these different shades, going around adding the brighter where his highlights are and then adding the darker where the darker shadows are and mid shade and some of the mid tones while just blending it together. Now my paints are fairly thin so it almost goes on as a, like a glaze. I'm going to add some highlights to his forearm here where I know that the, the fire is going to reflect. So I want this to be pretty bright. I'm going to take some of the darker tone underneath his arm here. And again, I'm just going around the different parts of his body, adding some highlights, some darks. Just jumping between these different shades. This is one thing that I like about using a wet palette is I can jump between these different shades as I'm going. I'm gonna add some highlights to his face as well. So I'm using the, the pure Ulthian Gray thinned out. I'll jump to the darker shade maybe on the side of his head where the light, the fire from his sword will cast a shadow. So I'm going to take the fang and also some of the Ulthian Gray. I'm going to create a brighter shade here. I'm going to highlight his tongue using this. Okay, I think that looks good. 
Next, I'll take some Emperor's Children. I'm gonna add a little bit of pink to this. So I'm gonna add just a little bit here with that, that color, that shade that we just created. And then I'm gonna just put a teeny bit on the tip of my brush, fairly thin. I'm just gonna get the very tip of his tongue. I just wanna add a little bit of pink there. Next, I'm gonna take P3 Mara White after that. I'll add that to my wet palette. And then I'll use this to highlight his teeth. Just going over the tips of his teeth. I'm not going over his teeth completely. After that's dry, we'll go ahead and start doing some shading. I'm gonna take some Nolan Oil and some Drakenhoff Nightshade. I'm not adding this to my wet palette. I'm gonna add this to a little plastic palette here. And this is gonna be about a three to one ratio three of the Nolan Oil to one of the Drakenhoff Nightshade. And this will give us a nice darker shade which will match his, his skin pretty nicely. And then I'll clean off my brush before I mix this so I don't have a lot of the Drakenhoff Nightshade still in my brush. And then I'll mix these two together. This gives us a nice dark bluish tone. And then I'll start shading all of the shadowed areas of his skin. And if you need to, use a second dry clean brush to soak up any excess that you might get on there. But I'll go through all the shadowed areas underneath his arm, maybe a little bit on his stomach, underneath his teeth. I'm gonna let that shade dry on his skin, and then I'm gonna to jump to the gold and shade that while this is drying. And then I'll come back to the skin and add another layer or two into some of the different shadows. I'm gonna take Agrax Earth Shade and the Drake and Half Night Shade. This will also be about a three to one ratio. Three of the Agrax Earth Shade and one of the Drake and Half Night Shade. We're gonna use this to shade the gold. I'll clean off my brush and then mix these two together. With the shade, I'm gonna take a thin brush and then paint into the recesses of his headpiece and then I'll go over all the other gold on him as well. After that, I'm gonna take straight Nolan Oil, and you can just go straight from the pot and then go over his hair with the Nolan Oil. While the hair and the gold are both drying, then I'm gonna jump back to the skin. So I'll take again Nolan Oil and then Dragonhoff Nightshade, and then do the same thing as before and build up some of the shadows. By jumping back and forth, it allows me to continue to work without stopping and pausing and waiting too long between different shades. Add some of this underneath his chin into the different areas where I want it to be darker. Okay, I'm gonna let that completely dry and then once it does, then I'm gonna add some of the highlights back into the skin. So first, I'll take the brighter tone that we created for his skin and then add a little bit more to his forearm Brighten that up a little bit more. Add some into his lats, wherever I want it to be a little bit brighter. And my paint is pretty thin, almost going over it like a glaze. Maybe onto the back of his leg. And as you're building it up, you'll want to let it dry. And then if you need to add another layer, then go ahead and keep building it up. Next, I'm going to take Agrax Earthshade, and I'm going to add this just here into the recesses of the horns underneath his chin, as well as all the skulls. Okay, once that completely dries, then I'm going to take a little bit of white and mix that with the Shopti bone that we added to our wet palette. 
I don't want it to be completely white, but I don't want it to be as dark as the Ushapti bone, so about halfway. And then I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to the to his horns here. And then I'll highlight that with, with pure white. I'm going to do the same thing with his teeth. I'll add a little bit of white to the tips of his teeth as well. Alright, for the next step we're going to start working on the sword as well as some additional highlights. So first I'm going to take Evil Sun Scarlet and add this to my wet palette. And I'm going to use this to go over his sword. You might need to add a couple layers. If you do, then let it dry completely and then add another layer. While that's drying, I'm going to take some Retributor Armor and add that to my wet palette. I'm going to thin that out just a little bit. I'm going to build up some of the highlights back into the gold pieces. So I'm using a fairly thin brush. I don't want to get it into the recesses, but I'm going to start building up some of the highlights. I would probably say go over about 80% of all the gold with this, just avoiding the different recesses and the different shaded areas. And then I'll take some Liberator Gold and add that to my wet palette. And then I'll start highlighting a little bit further. As I'm building it up, I'm being more and more selective where I'm going to add highlights. So if you went over about 80% with the previous, with the Retributor Armor, I would probably say more like 50%, 40% using this. Mainly the edges, the parts that the light is going to hit the most. I'm just working my way around adding these different highlights. All right, next, I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to take some Storm Host Silver, and this will help really bring in some of the highlights. I'm going to do a mix of the Stormhole Silver and the Liberated Gold. I'm going to be even more selective on where I'm going to add these highlights. Mainly just the tops here where the light's going to hit the most. Now I'm actually just painting the top half of these rivets here on his on the armor going around. And then for the brighter highlights, I'm going to use straight storm host silver. Add a little bit here on the armor on his arm. Just the top parts where the light is going to hit the most. All right, next I'm going to go back to Evil Sun Scarlet and add another layer onto the sword. Again, using a wet palette allows you to jump from one part to another while letting the different parts dry. While that layer is drying, then I'm going to go back to his headpiece. I'm going to use just straight Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to paint in some of the shade into the recesses of the gold. Parts where some of the highlights may have gotten in and filled that in. I just want to bring back some of that detail. So next I'm going to take Troll Slayer Orange and then add that to my wet palette. And it's fairly thin, again almost going on like a glaze. And I'm going to start from the top and then work my way down. I want it to stay red towards the bottom of his sword where his hilt meets the sword. Working from the top down, and I'm letting it just thin out from my brush as I'm going down. 
You might need to add two or three layers of this, letting it dry completely in between each layer. But next I'm gonna take Flash Kits Yellow, and then I'll add that to my wet palette. Same thing as before, keep it fairly thin like a glaze, and then work from the top down. Again, if you need to, do two or three layers, allowing it to dry between each layer. Next I'm going to do a mix between the Troll Slayer Orange and the Flash Gets Yellow. Just as a glaze, keeping it fairly thin, I'm going to go over the hilt of his sword. Once that's completely dry, then I'm going to blend it together using Transparent Orange by Vallejo. I really like this. It really blends the different shades together, different tones together. So I'm going to add this to just a plastic palette here. I'm not adding it to my wet palette because it's, it's already fairly thin. I'm going to glaze this over between the red and the different tones that we just painted onto his sword. This will help really blend it all together. But as you can see, I'm working now from the bottom up, keeping the top fairly yellow. So for the next step, I'm going to take some P3 Mar White, add that to my wet palette, which I'll use here in just a minute. And then I'll get a clean brush. I'm going to jump back to my Red Sun Scarlet. I'm going to paint over the flames along the sword. Now this is where I'm going to use a little bit of the white, thinned out. I'm going to add just a little bit to the tip of the sword at the top here. Again, I'm just letting it glaze on, so it's fairly thin. I just want to brighten that up just a little bit at the tip of his sword. On the bottom part of the sword, I'm going to take some Abaddon Black and the Red Sun Scarlet and create a dark red tone. And then fairly thin, I'm going to start from the bottom and then work my way up just a little bit on the bottom of the, on the sword, as well as go over the tips of the flames with this. I want that to be fairly dark, as if the fire is just kind of burning out as it gets towards the tip, it's going to be a little bit darker. And then I'm also going to use this to go over the hilt of his sword. As you can see, it's fairly thin. All this is going on, each layer that I add goes on like a glaze, and then I'm letting it dry in between, adding a, an additional layer or two layers or three layers if I need to in different areas. But once that's completely dry, I'm going to go back to transparent orange, again add this and let this all blend together. I'm staying away from the darker tips of the flames, but mainly coming in here, middle part of the sword, as well as blending that down towards the base, just where the darker red meets the brighter part of the sword. This will help kind of blend that together. I'm gonna jump back and use some P3 Mara White mixed with my yellow. I'm gonna thin that out. And I'm gonna use this to paint the designs in his sword. I'm going to jump to the white, get this middle area with the white where it's going to be hottest. Yellow towards the top, and then pretty thin towards the bottom where, where it's darker. And for the next step, I'm going to take straight P3 Mar White, and I'm going to paint into the designs onto his skin. And go ahead and pause here if you need to while you finish that. I'm going to jump to Army Painter Lava Orange. I'm going to add paint over the white into the designs on his skin with this. Using a fairly thin brush. I'm just working my way around, painting all that in. And then next I'm going to take Evil Sun Scarlet. 
Again, taking a small brush, and then I'll go over where I just painted the lava orange with this. Now my brush, I'm using it almost like a dry brush, and I'm just feathering this just over the edges of his skin where the designs are. I'm gonna take an even thinner brush. I'm gonna take Flash Gets Yellow, and then paint within those different designs. All right, and then just as before, I'm gonna take Transparent Orange, and then using a smaller brush, I'm gonna blend that in. So I'll go through those different designs with the, with the Transparent Orange. All right, I think this is looking pretty good so far. Next, I'll take a glaze called Blood Letter. And now I'm gonna start working up where the fire is reflecting off of his skin. I'm gonna take some transparent orange. I'm gonna add that in there as well. So at first this looks pretty bright, a red and orange mix, but I'm actually gonna go over this with his skin tone, a thin layer to help blend it together. I might add a little bit of the transparent orange to some of the gold as well where, the, where I know the fire is gonna reflect off of. I'm gonna add some blood letter into his eyes as well as into the designs on his arms and his skin as well once that's completely dry. This will help brighten that up a bit. All right, I'm gonna let that completely dry and then I'm gonna go back to my red and just add a little bit to his eyes. While that's drying, I'm gonna take corn red, and now I'm gonna start painting the lava. So I'm gonna add corn red to where the lava is gonna be as my base color. All right, now once the skin is completely dry, I'm gonna go back to my original tone that we created for his skin. I might add a little bit of Othian Gray into that just to brighten it up a little bit. Make sure it's fairly thin. I'm gonna use this as a glaze to go over his skin where we just put the red and the orange. Okay, once you're done with that, we are ready to move on. So we're gonna work on the base. So I'm gonna take Scrag Brown, and I'm gonna use a dry brush, get most of the paint off. I'm gonna start building up the base with this. I think this gives a nice burnt charcoal look to the base. And I'll use this to go over the skulls as well, avoiding the tops of the stones, mainly just around the rocks. I'm gonna take some Abaddon Black, and I'm actually gonna paint over the, the rocks. I forgot to do that. I'm gonna paint over the rocks where I originally got some of the brighter dry brush. So now if you notice, you see the my lava is black. It's because I accidentally got a little bit of black on there. I'm gonna paint over that with corn red, so if you didn't get any black on yours, then don't worry about it. Keep yours painted with corn red, but I'm gonna use the black to go over some of the rocks. And I'm just going back to the scrag brown and dry brushing over where I just painted black and touched up the, the rocks. Okay.
Okay, I think this looks pretty cool so far. So now for my next part, which you probably can skip this part, but I'm gonna take the corn red and revisit the lava and put that and apply the corn red over the lava. But once that's completely dry, then we can go ahead and take Mephiston red. And I'm gonna take the Mephiston red and go over the majority of the lava with this. Now while that's still wet, I'm gonna take a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange and mix that in a little bit into the Mephistone Red, being more selective, mainly in the, the middle part of the lava. While that's wet, I'm gonna to jump to the yellow as well and add a little bit of that in there. Just kind of swirling this around in there. Here I clean my brush completely and then added a little bit more yellow. I'm gonna swirl that in just a little bit more into the center part of the lava. But while it's still wet, then you can add the orange, kind of swirl that in, mix it in with a little bit of the red, jump to the yellow, mix that in, and just kind of swirl that in as well. All right, and then I'll let that completely dry and then go to the transparent orange and then I'll go over some of the yellow and some of the red, mainly avoiding the, the center part of the yellow. I wanna make sure that stays yellow. I think this looks good. We'll let that completely dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna take Mephistone Red on a dry brush and with this, I'm gonna create a glow look on the rock underneath, just above the lava and red and on the sides of the lava. So you wanna get a lot of the excess paint off of your brush and just start dry brushing underneath the stone here and along the rocks. This will help create a red glow. I'm also gonna dry brush a little bit underneath his legs as well. Next I'll take Troll Slayer Orange and do the same thing, but just a little bit less. I'm gonna get most of the paint off and then just do a little bit of the Troll Slayer Orange over the red. And then after that, I'm gonna jump right back to Mephiston Red, clean off your brush, and then jump back to Mephiston Red, and then just add a little bit more over that orange. This will help add a little bit more glow. I'm not going over it completely, but just adding a little bit of red back into it. The red, and then the orange, and then the red back onto it helps brighten that up. Might add just a little bit here underneath his foot. I'm fanning it across, I'm not getting very much, just a, just a hint of red underneath his shadowed areas. I wanna have a little bit of a glow underneath here. This will help add a little bit of red light coming up from the lava underneath his skin. I really don't have very much paint on here at all. You wanna make sure that you barely have any paint on your dry brush when you go over his skin. All right, I think this looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna take Carrick Stone, and I'm gonna take my dry brush, and with this, I'm gonna go over the skulls on the base. I'm not going over the skulls completely, I just wanna bring out some of the edges and some of the highlights of the skulls while still maintaining the dark, burnt ash look on the skulls. And then for the next step, I'm gonna take P3 Meneth White Highlight. It's kind of a cream colored white. And then I'm gonna highlight the skulls just a little bit more along the edges with this. And again with this, I'm just getting a few of the edges of the skulls just to bring out a little bit more highlight.
Now I barely have any paint in my brush. I'm just using it almost like a dry brush and going over a little bit of the skulls with this. After that, I'm going to take Ulthian Gray. And again, I'm going to take my dry brush. Make sure that you get most of the paint off. I'm going to add a little bit onto the, onto the tops of the stones to give it kind of a, an ash look. As you can see, I'm going fairly slow. I want to make sure that I don't get very much on there. Just a hint. And I'm mainly going around the top edges of the stones. Okay, when you're ready to move on, then I'm going to take Gorthor Brown, and I'm going back to the, the Fire Giant. I'm going to add this to the wet palette, and I'm going to use this to start highlighting his hair. So I'm taking a fairly thin brush, just working along the top parts of his hair. I'll use the same thing to highlight the cloth on the back hair and, and going underneath them. Mostly avoiding the, the middle part of the cloth. And then I'm going to take Lead Belcher. And then I'm going to paint the little rivets on the back of his cloth. And then next take a bat in black and then go and touch up around the base. And you know what, I apologize, I almost forgot. There are a couple of last things that we need to do. I'm actually gonna take Mephison Red, and I'm gonna take a little dry brush. Don't have very much on my dry brush at all, and I'm gonna dry brush just around the, the designs on his back, on his arms. Just give a little bit of a glow going around these designs and help blend that in. And then for my next step, I'm going to take a little bit of black and I'm going to paint the inside of the eyes of the skulls. I want to go back and then add the glow to his eyes. So I'm actually adding black into all the different eyes into the skulls. That'll be the, the base color. Don't worry if you accidentally get a little bit out. We'll touch that up. It's actually pretty easy. We'll use a dry brush to do that. We'll take some Carrick Stone and then take a little dry brush and make sure you avoid the skin everywhere we paint it, but just go over to touch up and fix where you may have gotten some black outside of the eyes of the skulls. And again, make sure you don't have very much paint in your dry brush. Make sure you get most of that off. And then I'm going to go back to Evil Sun Scarlet, and then I'll go and paint the eyes of the skulls. Once I've painted all the eyes of the skulls, then I'll take Troll Slayer Orange and then add that into the eyes of the skulls as well. I'm using a pretty small brush, just adding a little bit of the Troll Slayer Orange into there. And if you need to, go and take Ushapti Bone to do any touch-ups on the skulls. And finally, I'll take Blood Letter Glaze and add a little bit of that into the eyes of the skulls. I'm going to add a little bit more of that into his eyes as well. And then for one final step, I'm going to take my dry brush and some Mephiston Red. I'm going to go back to his base. I'm going to get most of the paint off. I'm going to add a little bit here onto the side of this skull just to look like the lava, the glow from the lava is reflecting off, maybe a little bit under his hand as well. 
All right, after that, I think we are done. Go ahead and continue any additional highlights or additional touch-ups that you need to. And once you're completely done and it's completely dry, of course, then you wanna seal it with a lacquer. But I think this turned out pretty cool. This one definitely took a bit longer with the prep work, but I really like how it turned out. Um, I especially like the base, the lava, the rocks, the skulls. I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, but with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some useful tips along the way. If you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe below, and you can also visit my Patreon page if you'd like to support future videos. As always, thanks again for watching and painting with Nerd Paints. Uh -huh.